What's up, everybody? Welcome back to UFSU, or sorry, I should say TCGU. Uh, so today I was brought a kind of like a deck challenge, or I like to think of it as a challenge. Uh, Pokey Pokey you, shout outs to you uh, for asking for an evil torn list. Uh, I actually think this deck's really fun, uh, and it's actually like really, really pesky, which I absolutely love about this deck. Uh, Tornaloose is actually probably my favorite character right now. Um, I like seven-handers, uh, and I like any character that has the air symbol, but today we're playing Torn Loose Under Evil, so let's get right into it. So yeah, guys, like I said, we're playing Torn Under Evil today. Uh, so since we're playing a uh, seventh cross character, we want to max out usually on our one dots, and then we're playing two dots as well. Uh, but since we're playing Torn Loose, we're playing four one dots, because he says at the start of the game you get to search your deck for up to three copies of the one dot, put them in your staging area, uh, and then he's got two good enhances, his first enhance is as a cost, put a character card from your staging area into your card pool for 4 damage. Really good. And then other enhances, once per turn, give a gauge attack throw, which is also really, really good. Uh, so yeah, this card, this character just hits really fast, really hard, and you get to see a lot of cards because you're a 7-hander. Unfortunately, you only have 20 life, but it's not too big of a deal. But so since we're playing 4 1-dots, we're playing 3 of the 2-dots. Uh, so the 2-dot says, enhance... Your opponent's next check to play a card gets a minus one for each card in their uh, for each character card in your card pool, and then its other effect is R. After a character card enters or leaves your staging area, you make your opponent flip one foundation. So we're gonna hack a lot of checks, and then we're gonna flip. Uh, we're gonna really annoy our opponent by flipping a lot of their foundations. But so we're playing three of this, and it's also a zero mid block with breaker one, which helps us be even more pesky than we already are. So those are the characters that we're playing. Seven in total. And then onto the actions. We're playing two Call of the Dreamlands. I actually really like this card because on turn one and turn two, it's going to give minus four to your opponent's check. It's R remove after your opponent makes a check. That check gets minus X. X equals to the number of characters you have stacked in your staging area. And then the, if their opponent fails, it doesn't end their turn and they get to draw a card. But you use this on really important cards, whether it's your kill card or they're trying to kill you or just depending on the situation you're in. Uh, this card has a, a lot of random utility of just, uh, I already give you minus two to your check, I'll give you minus two, because I have two more, so minus four. Minus four to a check is a lot. Uh, and then its other uh, ability is form. Your next four non-attack cards ignore progressive. Uh, so if you open it and you don't think you're going to get a lot of utility out of it, then you can just help build it. It's, it's like a better revoke, uh, but it just doesn't build itself down. And then speaking of revoke, we're playing two of those, because uh, obviously, you know, what's the evil deck without revoke? Uh, we're using it for the uh, R. After your opponent plays an enhance ability, cancel it, and then uh, remove this card from the game. Uh, and then it also has a first form. Uh, all your checks to play found basically foundations this turn have minus one, and then during the end of the turn it builds face down. Uh, so we're just using this to counter our opponent's really annoying enhances that stop us from winning the game. And then the other action in the deck, I actually really love this card. It's Race Against Time. It's a 3-4 no block. It says, R remove after an attack is played. Remove it from the game and then play an attack from the owner's discard pile with the same difficulty, no check necessary. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're playing a lot of fours and then we're playing a lot of fives. And that's it. We're only playing fours and fives so that we can swap out our attacks for when the situation requires a certain attack. Um... And then you can also do it against your opponent, which is actually really good, so you can check their discard pile. If the attack they have in their discard pile is worse, then you can make them swap it out. And then if your opponent doesn't have an attack in their discard pile, this thing just actually shuts off the attack. Really good. Really good action. So on to the attacks. Uh, like I said, we're playing fours and fives. Uh, so the best four in his deck is probably going to be Allurophobia. Uh, it's a 4-3, 2 mid block, 3 mid for 2, powerful 2 weapon. It's got 2 enhances. This attack is plus two damage for each character card in your staging area and plus one speed for each character card in your discard pile. So if you play this on turn one, for example, it's going to get eight damage, so it would be a three mid for ten, which is already really good. And then his other enhance is remove one card from your staging area, double this attack's damage. Unfortunately, you can't remove the character cards uh, because this card is a cost, but you can use your tapped out foundations or a foundation that's just not really doing anything for you, and then just try and beat him there which is actually really nice. Uh, so we can get this to like a 3 mid for like 26 damage, which beats a lot of characters. Uh, this card puts in a lot of work. Um, so the goal of our deck is to hack our opponent's checks, send really, really big attacks at them that they can't block. So this card helps with that. And then since we're already being really pesky and trying to make sure our opponent doesn't block, we're playing 3 Barg Ice Fang. It's a 4-3 no block, 3 mid for 3. Charge, gauge, 3 weapon. Enhance, if this has 5 or more damage, it gets plus 5 speed. 
insanely good. And then Enhance, this cannot be blocked by character cards. So with Yu Yu Hakusho coming out, there's going to be a character that's going to rely on blocking character cards. This card's going to shut that down. And then a lot of the 7th cross characters play a lot of characters in their deck. And this is actually really, really good against that. And then with our character, it's going to get 4 damage. And then we're going to give it throw. And it's going to get 5 speed. So it's going to be 8 mid for 7 throw, gauge 3. So we're almost guaranteed to build our character as long as they don't play one of the really two good actions. Uh, yeah, I actually really like this card. I think it's the best common in the set. But Affliction probably deserves that title over this card. I think it's just by a smidge, though. The other four we're playing is Syndicate Slice. It's a 4-3-1 mid-block, 3-high-4, Desperation 2 weapon. Enhance, your next, check, your next check to play an attack gets plus 1, and then if this gets blocked, you draw a card. Uh, this card just has good utility. Uh, it helps you uh, lengthen out your attack strings uh, by maybe baiting your opponent to block uh, because you can use your character to give it 4 damage, so it's a 3-high-4-8, meaning that your opponent will want to block it, and then you'll get to draw a card. So onto the fives, we're playing three Coffee Samba. Uh, yeah, it might be a one check. It's a five one two mid block, but this card puts in a lot of work. It's Desperation two Tech Weapon Enhance as a cost. Draw two cards. Your opponent gets to draw two cards, which you might think that's a little detrimental to the game plan because we're hacking checks and they're going to see more good blocks. But its other enhances, it gets multiple X and stun X equal to the number of cards in your opponent's hand. So this thing literally just minimum says stun two multiple two because you're going to use the draw effect first, then you're going to give it keywords. Uh, some situations, you might not even want to draw cards. You might just want to give it keywords. Uh, but yeah, this card's really good in our deck. We're playing two Flame War, because we're playing under Evil, uh, and we want to have really good blocks. Uh, so Flame War takes care of that for us. It's a 5-3, five, 5 mid for 4, Desperation 4, Fury. It's got a 1 high block, and we're using that for its static. When you're attempting to block with this card, you set your opponent's tax speed to 0. And then while this is in your card pool, whenever any player tries to block a card, you burn your opponent for 1. Uh, so your opponent will just send like a really fast attack, and you can either change it to a mid with one of the foundations we're playing, or you can just even half block it, and you're going to half block it on a 1, which is really good, and they'll burn them for 1. Uh, this card is actually really good, um, and then since we're playing Race Against Time, we can just play this normally, and then we'll just race it against time for a better 5 difficulty attack that's in our discard pile. Um, then I'm playing 3 ISSP Execution. It's a 5-3, 2 high block, 3 mid for 5 stun 2 weapon. I can mill the top 4 cards of my deck to give 2 damage, which is really nice, because then it's a 3 mid for 7, uh, which makes my opponent want to block it. And then with stun 2, it's going to make it even harder for my opponent to block it. Then it has a really good deadlock enhance. Add a stun or weapon attack from your discard pile to your hand. I think there's only 4 attacks in this uh, deck that we can't pick up, which is fine. We actually prefer those like in our discard pile anyways for race against time. Uh, but yeah, this card's really good. Uh, with our character and then its enhance, it's a 3 mid for 11. That's begging for your opponent to block it, which is what we want to do. We want our opponent to block as much of our stuff as possible, so our stuff that's actually going to kill them will kill them. Uh, we're playing 2 Netherstorm. I kind of want to play a third one, uh, but it's a 5-3, 1 high block, 3 high for 6, charge, gauge 6, ranged reversal. It's static is while this is in the card pool, your characters ignore progressive difficulty, which is actually really insane for our deck. Uh, so we'll play this as our first attack, and we'll just stuff as many character cards in our card pool as possible so that uh, we get a lot of value, a lot of advantage. Uh, and then it's got two enhances. As a cost, you can add a character from your discard pile to your card pool, and then you pick one of your opponent's face-down foundations and put it in their hand. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this ability is sometimes your opponent can mix up their face-down foundations if they know you're playing this card, and then you don't know what you're bouncing anymore. But if your opponent doesn't mix up their foundations, this card's actually really insane because you can, like tell what block they're going to be getting in their hand. And then its other enhances give minus give a minus one to your opponent's next check to play a card for each character card in your card pool. So this pairs well with your character because this is going to make your characters ignore progressive and then you'll just stuff as many character cards as you can in your card pool and then give your opponent minus to their check. So yeah, this card's actually really good. Uh, we don't play it for the reversal too much. Uh, we play it to usually start our combo. I kind of do want to fit a third one in here. And then the last five that we're playing in our deck is Time Slow. I actually really like this card. I wish I would have played Time Man when he was legal, uh, but it's a 5-2, 1 high block, 4 mid for 6. It's got a static that says when this card is in your card pool, all of your opponent's checks, not even checks to play cards, all of their checks get minus 1, which is actually really good. I'm going to skip over the Time Man Enhance because we're not Time Man, but its other enhance is Gain 2 Life. Uh, so we're playing like a little bit of a desperation game uh, with our 20 life character. So this is actually a really, really good enhance for us. Gaining 2 life is actually really, really good for us. Um, then it's got Charge, Desperation, Stun. 
which is really good, and then stun two. So it has two different instances of stun, so it can total out to stun four if we're at nine or less life. Uh, but yeah, this card's really good. Uh, you can block with it to be pesky on your opponent's turn, or you can just play it on your turn to hack even more checks. So that's it there for the attacks. We'll go into the foundations. I'm playing two Fallen Angels. Uh, it's a 0-5-2 low block that basically confirms our next check to play a card. When, after this card is played, you reveal the top card of your deck, and you can choose to discard it or not. So we're just using this to confirm checks. We're playing two Hell's Reach because while it's playable while committed, to ready this card by flipping. So this one foundation is actually two foundations. Uh, we don't want to block with this card. We want to build it for it being one to two foundations. We're playing two Most Trusted Assassin. Assassin. Uh, so since we're like a desperation deck a little bit, we want to pay life, but we don't want to pay too much because we only have 20 life. Uh, but it's just going to help us end our opponent's turn a little faster, and then we're already hacking checks. That's the base like goal of our deck. So this just helps us accomplish that. And then it has a first form. Your opponent reveals a random card in their hand. So if they only have one card in, your, in their hand and you're going to race against time, you can just pick a block zone they don't have for your race against time, and then that's going to be a lot of value for you. But yeah, we're using it for the once per turn enhanced lose one, give minus two, one to your opponent's next check to play an attack. Then we're playing for our last spam, Uniting Rebels. It's a 0 6 3 mid block. Desperation enhanced once per turn, gain a life. Uh, like I said, we're a baby desperation deck, and we only have 20 life, so if we get smacked pretty hard pretty quickly. This card is going to help us uh, build up. Uh, there was a game where I was at one life for a while, uh, and then thanks to the time slow card, and then Uniting Rebels, I went from one to seven life in a matter of one to two turns, and I think I actually won the game just because I was a seven-hander with 27 life that game, basically. Uh, this card's actually a really good spam. On to the one diffs. We're playing two ranging good deals. Um... I am mix matching it with a new Empress from Nether Realm. I'll show you guys that card next. But it's a this is a one six desperation enhanced flip draw one card. Um, it's hard for us to stay or be in desperation just since we have such a little life total. Uh, we don't want to max out on desperation enhances and stuff like that because they'll just be dead. Uh, so I'm only playing two of these, but I'm playing two new Empress of Another Realm. This says enhance flip, lose three life, draw a card. So I'm playing two of this because this is no pay. I don't have to pay when I'm in desperation. And then this one is pay. I can draw any time. Uh, and then it has a desperation enhance of itself. Look at the top card of your opponent's deck. Uh, that one's not too relevant, but we can also use that information to see how much we should hack their check or if it's even worth realistically hacking their check. Uh, but yeah, it's got a three high block, which doesn't matter too much, but this just pays us three and draws us a card. We're playing three Cage Fighter. Since we're already hacking checks, we might as well play this card. It's a one, five, three high block. Respond flip. After your opponent makes a check to play a non-foundation card, give them minus one to their check, and then this check does not make them end their combat phase. Um, so yeah, you just wait for your opponent to play a really good card, or you can do this on your opponent's block and just try and get them to fail so they just end up taking the damage. Or you put your opponent in a weird situation where it's not worth it for them to play their like five diff attack if they check a regular attack. Uh, so this card puts in work since we're already hacking checks. I'm playing two Orphan Alchemists. Uh, I'm mainly playing it for the six check and then the two low block, but it actually has really good effect. Um, it's a one diff, but it says enhance flip, reveal the top card of your deck uh, so we can help check um or we can help confirm our checks and then its other effect is uh, respond flip after your opponent plays a non-character ability that causes one or more of your cards to leave your deck or discard pile you can cancel it and draw a card that effect doesn't come up too often we're mainly using it for the first enhance and the six check i'm playing two the azure nightmare so one six three high block it's got a bunch of different effects <clears throat> this card cannot bring your opponent to zero life and then after this card is discarded your opponent burns for one after this card is committed due to a stun effect, your opponent loses two, and then enhance once per turn. You can discard one card to ready it. This is playable while committed. Uh, so it's a six check that readies itself by discarding a, a single card, which is not too bad. And then it randomly uh, will uh, dissuade your opponent from stunning you. Uh, On to the one-ofs of our two diffs. We're playing four one-ofs. Uh, we're playing Confronting Jetta since we're playing Evil. Uh, it's a 2-5, two, 2 high block, enhance once per turn. This attack gets plus X or minus X damage equal to the difference between the speed, the current speed and then the printed speed. So with Bargeist Fang, we can actually use this to give plus 5 speed, and then we're going to use our character to give it throw. So it's going to be an 8 mid for 12 throw with gauge 3. Seems pretty insane to me. Uh, this card's a good one of just because it's unique. We're playing 1 Damnation. This says R commit. After your opponent plays an enhance ability, print it on a foundation, cancel it. So we're going to want to cancel stuff that significantly DRs us or 
takes us away from our game plan. Uh, so things like refusing to let go, uh, stuff like that, that just does a lot of DR and a lot of work against us. Uh, it's got no block, but it's a unique foundation that we want to try and see and build. We're playing one face of a monster. It's got three effects that are each playable once per turn. It's a 2-5-2 two, two high block. R, after an attack is played, it gets minus one speed, and then I can pay one additional life to give it another instance of minus one speed. And then it's got a deadlock form. Your opponent discards a card. And then a desperation enhance. Change the zone of your of the current attack to any other zone. Um, so we can, like, gauge what's in our opponent's hand and then try and change it. Or uh, if we need to change a block, uh, like if they're throwing a low at us and we have a flame aura in hand, we can change it to a high to block with our flame aura. Really good card. I'm playing one last of his kind is the last one of two diff foundation. As you can see, a lot of these are unique, um, so I don't want to play too many of them just because I don't want to clog them and then, then be useless. Uh, but it's got three effects as well. It's a 2-5, two, 2 low, unique. Lose 2 life. This attack gets minus 4 damage to a minimum of 1, which is actually really good for our deck since we're a 20 life character. And then it's got Desperation Enhance and a Deadlock Hands that both say this attack gets plus 2 damage. So onto the 2 ofs, or even 3 ofs for our, our 2 diffs. I'm playing two all-powerful sorcerer. I actually really like this card. It's a 2-4, which is uh, a little unfortunate, but I think if this card was a 5, it would be really, really good. It's a 3 high block. It says, R commit, flip, discard one character card. After your opponent plays an enhance ability on a non-character card, cancel it. That's actually really good for our deck since we're playing three 2-dots, and then we actually have a way to fetch uh, character cards from our discard pile. I'll show, you, I'll show you guys that card next. And its other effect is enhance once per turn. Discard a card with a 6 check to draw a card. Uh, so we can discard a lot of our useless foundations, or we can discard extra character cards to draw a card. Uh, you can like even discard an Azure Nightmare, burn them for one, and draw a card. Talk about value. Uh, so I'm playing two Section 13's Failed Experiment, so we're going to use that to help combo and fuel our all-powerful Sorcerer. Uh, but it's a 2-5-2 two, two high block. It says Enhance Remove, discard one card, add one character card from your Remove from Play Game pile to your hand, which is really good. Uh, you're basically just swapping out a card from your hand and losing a foundation to pick up your two-dot character to uh, zero mid-block breaker one them, which is not a bad not a bad play at all. And then its other effect is enhance destroy add a character card from your discard pile to your hand. So the same thing, we're going to lose one foundation to add a zero mid-block breaker one to our hand. It's got a lot of utility, and we can combo that with all-powerful sorcerer all day. I'm um, playing two evil eye in this deck. It's a 2-5-2 two, two high block. The abilities on this card are playable while committed, and none of them are once per turn. Enhance flip, return this current attack to printed speed, which is nice. And then enhance remove one character card from your hand or card pool to draw a card. Uh, so we can combo this with Section 13's Fail Experiment. So we don't actually lose our character cards. They just uh, get put to the side. Uh, but we can, we can use this to help dig... Um, or if we don't have a nether storm for our combo, we can still put a card in, give four damage, and then remove it, draw a card. So it's like our attacks replace themselves. I actually really like this card. I'm playing two Outworlds Eris. Uh, so since we're already hacking checks and we're already stunning, we want to try and get rid of our opponent's pesky foundations, because they're really good foundations, they're not going to stun or flip. So we want to try and deal with those. So we're using it for its first enhance, which is remove... Lose X Vitality, add one asset or foundation from your opponent's staging area to their hand. X equals the printed difficulty. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to pay life to bounce really cool stuff. And then its other effect is R, lose X Vitality. After an attack is played, it gets minus X to its stun rating, which isn't too bad. And then for the last card in our deck, uh, it's the only 3 diff that we're going to play in this deck is Spaceland. It's a 3-5-2 low block. It's got uh, an enhance and a response. Enhance, discard the top two cards of your deck to get plus one damage. And then R commit, after your opponent adds one or more cards to their momentum during the combat phase, they discard two momentum. Uh, so the, what, we're, what we want to do in our deck is we want to try and mill as many cards as possible so we can get as many character cards in our discard pile, uh, and we can try and get as many attacks in our discard as possible. We want to fuel our Allurophobias to make them as big and fast as possible, and we want to fuel our race against time. That's the main thing. Is we want to make sure that we can play any 5 diff from our discard pile or any 4 diff from our discard pile. So this card actually puts in a lot of work. And then thanks to this and Torn, our Nether Storms actually get to gauge. Because if you use your character with Torn, it's only going to have 10 damage. But thanks to this, it's going to have 11 damage. And with Throw, it's going to deal 6. So you'll be able to gauge 6. So this card actually puts in a lot of work. So yeah, guys, that was my Torn Loose Evil deck profile. Uh, thank you, Pokey Pokey you, for what I'd like to consider a challenge. Uh, I've been wanting to throw an evil torn list together for a little bit. Um, I was playing like a fog blanket oriented build. It was like my air build, but I was playing evil. Um, I just felt like I couldn't get there. And with this deck, I feel like I can get there thanks to race against time and then me hacking my opponent's checks. 
Um, I just feel like this evil build compared to my last one is a little more consistent. And yeah, I just want to say huge shoutouts to Pokey Pokey you for the challenge. Um, I actually do randomly really like this deck. Um, it's actually it's actually really fun. Uh, we check one sometimes, we check two sometimes, but you know it's a card game, so anything can happen. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. If you like the content, you can check out our YouTube down below. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, even tell your mom about us. And then you can check us out on Facebook or even Patreon at TCG University. Um, you can either subscribe at the uh, one, two, or three uh, tier level, and then. Um, you can join us on Sundays for our Sunday Fun Days on Facebook where we live stream and we like to interact with uh, the community. Uh, a lot of people just like to bounce ideas off each other and see what kind of kooky ideas we're coming up with. But yeah, guys, thank you again very much for watching my Evil Tornaloose deck profile. And thank you again, Pokey Pokey U, for the challenge. I really appreciate it. You guys stay learned.